Sure. Yeah. Um, it started back in. There we go. Started back in February when the Seventh Circuit uh, overturned not only the death penalty but his uh, his, his entire trial. Um, so starting in February, um, he stood accused of these crimes, um, and it was up to us to notify the court what we wanted to do. Um, we we I met with the family on multiple occasions. I talked to the attorney general's office, who had handled the appeal for the last nine nine years, I believe. Um, and we we started to to look at the case and to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses. Um, this case has always been a strong case factually. Um, the facts haven't changed since it was tried in 2002. Um, what has changed is is what's happened in the interim uh, with the different court rulings, um, specifically with the Seventh Circuit. Um, the the case went to the Seventh Circuit um, last year on the issue of whether or not he had a high enough IQ to be executed. Um, under a case called Atkins. Um, the court ruled in the state's favor um, that he was intelligent enough to be executed and he wasn't precluded from that. However, they opened it up to three additional, um, three additional questions in which they overturned the case, um, the sentence, and the conviction and sent it back so that we could restart. Well, we hadn't uh, made that determination. Uh, we, we, contact, we got in contact with, with all the different uh, different people that have represented um, this case. The Attorney General's office has represented the state since the um, actual trial. Um, and, and so we got with them, we talked with them, we talked with the Sheriff's Department, we did the initial investigation. Um, and then after we'd done all those things, uh, we talked with uh, Defense Counsel uh, to see if we could get to uh, some type of resolution in this case. Um, we met multiple times with the family. Uh, the family is very adamant that they wanted to proceed with the death penalty. Um, their, their stance has been the same since the beginning. Um, we, we looked at those things and, and, and like I said earlier, the, the facts are the same. This is a factually strong case. Uh, we would retry this case. We would get convictions on three murders. I don't think there's any question in that. The question is, is what happens when you get to the penalty phase? Um, after conviction, a jury's going to hear it and they're going to be asked to decide unanimously death penalty, life without parole, or sentence to a term of years. Um, it, it's our feeling um, that given the gap of time um, and, and given what we've seen in other death penalty cases, that there's a high likelihood, uh, particularly with his history of uh, mental defects, that the, the jury would give a life without parole sentence. We felt that the likelihood of that was high, uh, but that there would still be a chance to get a death penalty conviction. The next step that you look at is what would happen to it on appeal. And when you look at the 51-page opinion that the Seventh Circuit issued, when you look at their concerns, uh, when you look at the reinstitution of the death penalty uh, back in 2007 by the state Supreme Court, by a divided court, a three to two vote, uh, we now have new uh, Supreme Court justices. We felt that we would either get life without parole at the trial setting, or that it would be sentenced to life without parole at one of the future, future as a result of one of the future appellate cases. And so um, we, we spoke with uh, defense counsel. Uh, we were able to reach an agreement in which he would come in, accept responsibility for his actions, plead guilty, um, and be incarcerated for the rest of his life. And that's what we did this morning.